makers. Back on the 11th of December, I ordered a new PC oscilloscope as a, an upgrade to my existing handheld oscilloscope. The PC oscilloscope I ordered is this Pantech uh, model 6074BC uh, digital oscilloscope. This uh, is being or was shipped from Hong Kong and was due to arrive between Wednesday the 8th of January and Thursday the 13th of February. Today it's the 24th of December so this has turned up very quickly and well ahead of when I was expecting to see it. So what we, when I first open a box we get a certification to say it's been certified by Handtech. In some nice um, anti-static plastic with some more silica gel we have the PC oscilloscope. USB on the back. It almost feels like a rubber housing. Um, it's not very slippery, but it does feel, it's a very hard rubber. Should afford some protection. As you can see, there are four channels and then we have our standard test points for calibration. Also in the box we have a standard oscilloscope probe, a second one, a USB cable for it. Now this one has a single USB type B on one end and two USB type A's on the other. One is for power and data and the other one is for power only. It uses a fair bit of power. The standard USB 2 port is rated at 500 milliamp so this draws somewhere between 500 milliamp and 1000 milliamp. You sometimes find this sort of thing with um, old external hard drives. A driver disc, which I am going to have to use. And then in the bottom of the box we've got two more cables. These connect to your standard oscilloscope input using BNC and have a red and black alligator clip. These are oscilloscopes that are used a lot in automotive applications. I'll be using it for electronics. Okay, a tuning tool, a cap to go over the end of the probe when you take this off, which insulates this part letting you just probe sticking out, and of course your standard hook type connection. This is a standard times one times ten, and there is a tuning, uh, I think it's a tuning capacitor in here to help with uh, some of the adjustment on it. You use the test output point to tune that on the by 1 and by 10 settings and you use this tool to adjust it so that you don't create interference uh, with a standard all metal screwdriver. You also have little rings that can replace this ring so that it's easier to keep track of which lead is doing, going where. On a single trace, it's not a drama, but when you have more than one trace, you really do need to make sure you get the right pros hooked up to the right spot. 
Okay. Just a list of what's in the box. Um, and these electrical characteristics. Okay, so I think next step is to uh, install the, the program and drivers and then plug it in. Now, I did download the user manual for this prior to it arriving and had a bit of a browse through. It does specify in the setup instructions to install the drivers first and then plug it in. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, on the CD that was supplied with the unit, uh, these are the files we currently have. We have a driver set of drivers, the manual, an SDK for writing software for it, and the installation program. So let's run the setup. We'll choose English. Keep switching to the uh, other screen. So the I'm um, recording. Okay, so that's now installed. So I've plugged it in. Now I made a click when I uh, started the software and it appears to be running quite nicely. I can see four traces so that's a good sign. I'm just going to plug a probe onto channel 1. Oh, there is a green flashing light in there. Not very bright, but there is one. We'll put that onto the ground. Put the probe onto the calibration point. Okay, so this is the signal we're seeing on channel 1, which is the yellow trace. If we speed up our, or actually slow down, we can see our square wave signal, which is supposed to be 1 kilohertz at 2 volts per peak.
an XY trace is used uh, when you're testing things like inductors and capacitors with an external oscilloscope or oscillator sorry uh, YT is a standard trace that we'll be using here I'm using one time no I'm not I'm using ten times let's switch that to one time and change our scale down to one volt so this is actually showing pretty close to what I would expect so that each of these grid marks is one volt that's going across too so that's showing quite well we are seeing a little bit of noise that's not uncommon this is the first time I fired it up so I'll have a bit of a play so I can learn more about it to uh, see that video when it comes out don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to be notified when I do release it. We'll see you on the next video.